Well, hi there. Turtles are amazing and shockingly unique reptiles. This one, the common snapping turtle, happens to be my favorite. But there are actually 14 families of turtles alive today and around 360 recognized species. It's been a bit difficult to determine exactly how the turtles relate to the other reptiles because, as I mentioned before, they're really weird. Most conspicuously, they have a shell. The shell is composed of two pieces, the carapace above and the plastron below. The shell is composed of a number of bones, including the spine and ribs, and is generally covered in keratinous scutes. Keratin is what comprises your hair and fingernails, for the record. And their pelvic and pectoral girdles, their limbs and associated skeletal elements, are contained uniquely within their rib cage. No other vertebrates have their limb girdles contained within their rib cages. Like birds, turtles all lay eggs, with no species giving live birth. Like crocodilians and some squamates, most have temperature-dependent sex determination. This means that the temperature at which the eggs incubate at certain points determines the sex of the offspring. Like birds, they have a beak instead of teeth, though toothed turtles are found in the fossil record. And modern reptiles all fall into the diapsid clade. Diapsid animals have two holes in the skull on each side behind the eye. You can see that really well on this velociraptor or on this tuatara, right there and right there. Well, turtles do not. Though it now seems that this is due to the holes, called temporal fenestrae, being lost over the course of evolution and not because they're not members of this group. All of this weirdness combines to make turtles rather difficult to place in the phylogeny of reptiles. However, our best understanding, based upon the fossils, genetic, and morphological data, places turtles rather in the middle of the phylogeny of reptiles, more closely related to the archosaurs, the birds and crocodilians, than to the lepidosaurs, the tuataras and lizards, including the snakes. Don't get me started on the snakes. Okay, so now that we have a handle on what a turtle is and where they fall in the phylogeny of extant reptiles, let's dive into the turtles. There are two big groups of turtles the Pleurodira and the Cryptodira. The easiest way to distinguish members of these groups is based upon how they retract their heads into their shells. The Pleurodira fold their heads off to the side. These are the side neck turtles, which is literally what Pleurodira means. And this clade contains three families, the Pelomedusidae, the Podonimididae, and the Chilidae. Though the ancestral range of this clade extends across the globe, including marine environments, today they are all freshwater turtles found in the southern hemisphere. Of the three families, the Pelomedusidae and the Podonimididae are more closely related to one another than they are to the Chelidae. Though all three are more closely related to one another than they are to any members of the Cryptodira clade. The Pelomedusidae are your African and Yemenese side neck turtles. They can most easily be distinguished from other side neck turtles because their plastron is hinged in the front. The Podonimididae are found in South America with one species occurring in Madagascar. They are distinguished from the other side neck turtles by the presence of only four claws on their hind feet. Though today there are only eight species from this family, it is an ancient clade dating back to the Cretaceous. One of the largest turtles ever the largest freshwater turtle and the largest side neck turtle ever discovered, Stupendemis geographicus, which grew to be 13 feet long and weighed over a ton, belong to this family. The Chelidae are my favorite group of side neck turtles. These are found in Australia, New Guinea, Indonesia, and South America, and include the snake neck turtles and the Matamata, -mata, all of my favorite members of the Pleurodira. This family often possesses an extremely long neck, like long as the carapace long. The long neck of the Matamata -mata is so cool that we made a whole video about it. And unlike most turtles that have temperature dependent sex determination, this family has XY sex determination like you. And that gets us to the Cryptodira. These are the hidden necked turtles, 
They are called hidden neck turtles because unlike the Pleurodira, which tuck their heads into their shells sideways, leaving their neck visible, these guys pull their heads straight into their shells, concealing their necks. The remaining 11 families of turtles all fall into this group. These 11 families are divided into two big groups. The smaller of the two, the Trionychia, contains two of the weirdest of all turtle families. These are the Trionychidae and the Coretto Chiliidae, the soft-shelled turtles and the pig-nosed or fly river turtle. You're not going to confuse these turtles with any others. The Trionychidae or soft-shelled turtles have, wait for it, soft shells. These shells lack the scutes of most other turtles and are instead covered with leathery skin. They are particularly soft and flexible at the edges, the margins. They also have lips, three claws on their feet, and snorkel noses. They might be the cutest of all turtles. And they're found in North America, Asia, and Africa. The only turtle that you would confuse these guys with are their closest relatives, the Coretto Chiliidae. These are the pig-nosed turtles of New Guinea and Australia. Not only are they found in different parts of the world from the soft-shelled turtles, but they are also the only non-sea turtles with flippers, and they swim like sea turtles. I was also surprised the first time I handled one by how hard their shells are. They're still covered with skin instead of scoots, but their shell underneath the skin feels like a normal turtle shell. This is not the case with the soft-shelled turtles. The remaining nine families are all in the other Cryptodira lineage. These are the hard-shelled hidden neck turtles. They are broken down into two main lineages. The Testinoidea, which contains four families, and the Americhilidea, which contains the final five. Within the Testinoidea are two big clades, each with two families. The first clade includes the Testudinidae, the tortoises, and their closest relatives, the Geomydididae, the Eurasian pond and river turtles, and the Neotropical wood turtles. The fact that the tortoises are in the middle of this huge turtle clade and are more closely related to the Eurasian pond and river turtles and neotropical wood turtles than those turtles are to any other turtles is the reason that tortoises, while a unique group, are still turtles. Tortoises, the family Testudinidae, are found on every continent except Australia and Antarctica. While it is true that tortoises are terrestrial animals, they generally can swim when necessary. The unique features are that they do not shed their scoots and they walk on their toes, digitigrade, as opposed to other turtles that walk on their whole foot, plantigrade. The Geomydididae, the Eurasian pond, river, and box turtles, and the neotropical wood turtles are beautiful turtles found in Europe, Asia, Northern Africa, and the American tropics. They have 24 marginal scoots. These are the edge scoots on the carapace and 12 scoots on their plastrons. Though one species has XY sex determination, most have ZW sex determination, which is like XY except it is the females that have two different chromosomes and the sex of the offspring is determined by the egg and not the sperm. The second clade within the testudinoidea includes the emididae, the terrapins, and the Platysternidae, the big-headed turtle, the only turtle that may be more rad than the common snapping turtle. I know that I once said that terrapins are a garbage group, and they often are, but as long as you only consider members of the family Imididae to be terrapins, then we have no problems at all. These are semi-aquatic turtles found almost entirely in the Western Hemisphere. This includes turtles like sliders, painted turtles, diamondback terrapins, and map turtles, and North American box turtles. The Platysternidae is another monotypic family composed of only the big-headed turtle. And like I said, this is a true rival to common snapping turtles as being the most rad. They are basically Southeast Asia's answer to the common snapping turtle. They have long tails which assist them in climbing. These are sometimes found up in trees. And since their heads are, unsurprisingly, enormous and cannot be retracted into their shells, they're enthusiastic about biting as a form of defense. Unfortunately, they're not doing well in the wild, and this is mostly due to overhunting. The final five families all fall into the clade Americhilidia. This clade itself has two large clades, 
the Chelanioidea, the sea turtles, and the Chelidroidea, the snapping turtles, mud and musk turtles, and the Central American river turtle. The Chelanioidea contains two families, the Dermochelidae, the leatherback sea turtle, and the Chelaniidae, all of the other sea turtles. This clade contains the largest turtle alive today, as well as Archelon, the largest turtle ever discovered at 15 feet and well over two tons. The largest turtle alive today is the only species in the family Dermochelidae, the leatherback sea turtle. Found in oceans all over the world, including colder regions, as aided by their large body size and high metabolic rates, as well as a host of other adaptations like brown adipose tissue and countercurrent blood flow to the extremities. They lack scutes and have instead a leathery covering to their shells, like those of soft-shelled turtles or, and pig-nosed turtles neither of which you will ever confuse with a leatherback sea turtle. Some soft shells get big, but these are the largest non-crocodilian reptiles on the planet, weighing up to a ton. They're also the fastest turtles in the world, swimming up to 22 miles per hour. For comparison, Michael Phelps swims at six miles per hour. Honestly, this is a pretty hardcore turtle. The other sea turtles fall into the family Chiloniidae. You know what a sea turtle looks like. These are also found around the globe in the ocean, but they are limited to tropical and semi-tropical waters. And that brings us to our final large clade, the Chelidroidea, containing the last three turtle families. The two most closely related families within this clade are the Dermatimididae and the Chinosternidae. The Dermatimididae is, once again, composed of only a single species, the Central American river turtle. These are found in Africa and Asia. Lies, they're found in Central America. Mostly Mexico and Guatemala. They're found primarily in freshwater, though they are sometimes found with barnacles on them. So they do go into brackish and perhaps even marine environments at times. They are big, weighing up to 49 pounds, but usually smaller than that. They have a silly pointed nose and they stay underwater almost all of the time. Their nests can even survive being submerged for weeks at a time. This is another turtle that is in real danger of being lost, unfortunately. Their closest relatives are found in the family Chinosternidae, the mud and musk turtles of the Americas. These are mostly small turtles with fairly domed shells for an aquatic turtle. As their name would suggest, they have glands under the rear of their shells that can release a foul-smelling musk when disturbed. And that brings us to the final and my personal favorite family of turtles, the Chelidridae, the snapping and alligator snapping turtles. These are turtles designed by a pair of 10-year-old boys waiting for the bus. The snapping turtles of the genus Chelidra, like Bubba Chunk here, are huge, over 30 pounds in the wild. They have tails off of a dinosaur. Their small plastron allows them to walk with their legs under their bodies, also like a dinosaur. They have big claws. They have a shell with spikes on the back, huge heads with powerful jaws on the end of a long, flexible neck that can launch the head out faster than you can react and reach most of the way over their shell, as well as being intelligent, interactive, and curious. To which the other boy responded by saying that we'll get rid of most of that intelligence and curiosity, as well as the long neck in exchange for jaws like a finger-severing bear trap with a worm inside, huge keels down the shell, and we'll make it 250 pounds. And thus, the genus Macrochelis was born. These North American turtles are not without great competition for radness among the turtles but they are my favorites of them all. And those are the 14 extant turtle families. Which animal group should we cover next? As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. By the way, I'm sorry if some of my pronunciations were off. I did my absolute best. I am not uh, a scholar in Greek or Latin. Some of these words I have never actually heard pronounced before I, I've read them, and I've done my best. But if you know a better pronunciation, consider me not shocked. <laughs> and this clade contains three families, the Pelomedusidae, the Podonimididae, and the Chiliidae. Dang it.
That last one's the easiest one and I said it wrong. <laughs> Brown adipose tissue and countercloent. Countercloent? <laughs> clip, clip, clip. You can do it. You're so close. <laughs> okay. Specifically, like this one might be a sulcata tortoise. And the fact that a sulcata tortoise is a tortoise doesn't mean it's not a sulcata tortoise. And the fact that a sulcata tortoise is a tortoise doesn't mean it's not a turtle. And the fact that it's a turtle doesn't mean that it's not a reptile. And the fact that it's a reptile doesn't mean it's not an amniote. Keep going. And the fact that it's an amniote doesn't mean that it's not a vertebrate. Keep going. And the fact that it's a vertebrate doesn't mean that it isn't a chordate. I like it. Go. And the fact that it's a chordate doesn't mean that it's not a deuterostome. Keep going. And the fact that it's a deuterostome doesn't mean that it's not a bilaterian. Keep going. And the fact that it's <laughs> a bilaterian doesn't mean that it is not an animal. Gotcha. And the fact that it's an animal doesn't mean that it's not a eukaryote. Yeah. Okay, and the fact that it's a eukaryote doesn't mean that it's not a cellular life form. Yeah. <laughs> that gets me basically to the base. <laughs> <laughs>